as a young man Fascinated for airplanes Ever since you came into my life It's like I'm flying in my own way The sky is a limit now, yeah I'm going higher than I ever dreamed And I've come too far to turn around Cause with you I can do Nothing I can do As long as I have you I can sail on a cloud Make a mountain lay down Take my shoes off Dance on the moon Yeah, 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 yeah Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible You got it Feel like I'm unstoppable Yeah Nothing is impossible I still hear my daddy say, with God you can do all things. Listen, trust him and believe, he's the king of all kings. And there's nothing I can do, Lord, as long as I have you. I can sail on the cloud, make a mountain lay down, kick my shoes off, dance on the moon. Nothing is impossible. Nothing, nothing is impossible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, say, ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is impossible. Feel like I'm unstoppable. Get up out of the bed. Come on, wash your face, brush your teeth, or brush your face, wash your teeth, whatever it is. Get up. Let's have an incredible time worshiping God today. I am super excited that you are here because I've got some special stuff in store for you today. I can't tell you everything, but I promise you, you don't want to miss this. And I hope and pray by now you've had an incredible Thanksgiving day in spite of Things are not the way that we want them and we may not be able to embrace all of our family. But I pray that at the very least, you took a minute to tell God, thank you. Thank you for life, for breath, for health, for strength, that I'm still here. Thank you that I am still here. Thank you, Lord, for whatever food you placed on my table. We got so many things to thank God about. And so, I, or thank God for. I hope and pray that it's not just a day but I hope it's a thanks living season every day of your life. It's not happy Thanksgiving, it's happy thanks living. You got that? So thank you again for worshiping with us. The praise team is going to take us higher. Uh, let's see that, the Son of God is lifted high. Your part, sing it. Come on, sing it, sing it. No, no, get on your note, on your note, on your note. The Son of God is lifted. I'm directing you. Okay, we need some help. <laughs> Let's go to the praise team. Here we go. I need you to type in the chat. Type, he's lifted high. And type that I'm lifting him right now. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Simple song, you know it. The Son of God is lifted high. Say. The Son of God is lifted high. Everybody say the Son of God is lifted high. 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 Right where you are in your home, come on, just begin to lift him. Lift him up, hey, yeah. He deserves the glory. And we lift your name, Jesus. And we glorify you, hey, hey. The Son of God is magnified. You say, the Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. of God. 
God is magnified. And we lift your name because you are magnified. So we say, Oh.
God needs contagious saints. He needs contagious believers. He needs some people who have been through enough that when you see them and you see the smile on their face and you see them always laughing and hilariously happy and you know the pain and the problems and the, and the trial and the sickness and sorrow that their lives have been hit with, but yet they still manage to keep an upbeat. When you see people like that, it causes you to want to know what are you doing what are you eating what are you drinking what are you watching who said what to you how did you get to this place that's what it is family to be contagious and God needs some contagious believers in order to be the church hey hey sir hey, hey come close Kim folk hey man man Kim folk <laughs> Yeah, I know some of my senior saints are having a fit right now. And let me go ahead and take this off so that my, my children don't have a heart attack. <laughs> I, I can hear them now. Dad, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Well, I'm just trying to push this point across. Service is different. You got it? We are not doing service the way that we always do. It's gonna be a slight change, but I assure you, you're gonna have a phenomenal time in the Word, with the Lord, and with your church family. Listen, if you have not been here, you have gotta go back and watch the previous videos because all month long, I have been pushing Be The Church. That has been my sermon series, Be The Church. And not only preaching it, teaching it, but we have modeled it. Since the beginning of the pandemic, it has been my priority and the church's priority to be the church. It's not enough that we just have church. It's not enough that we come to church. You are the church. And so we have taken some extraordinary measures and steps to be the church. Take a look at some of the things that we've done. For 15 years, providing hope, healing, and empowerment has been the heartbeat of our mission. This year, we've continued that mission with our commitment to be the church and love, live, and give to those who need it most. Since the beginning of this unprecedented season, through our GYA Give Yourself Away outreach, Victory has partnered with over 20 nonprofit and charitable organizations to serve individuals and families in need across the Chicago land area. Because of your faithful support and generosity, over 13,000 meals have been provided for families, individuals, and children. We've supported over 400 frontline workers, including nurses and doctors, with food cards and access to receive prayer. Supplied an entire building in the South Loop with much needed essentials and hygiene products. Thousands of Bibles, books, and supplies have been given to support almost 900 isolated senior citizens, including over 1,200 letters of love and encouragement. Over 400 volunteers have supported our weekly initiatives. And since the start of COVID-19, we've been able to support over 12,000 families and counting. This is what it means to never back down. This is what it means to be the church. We're 15 years strong because of people like you. Your giving continues to make a difference and victory has made giving simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details, then simply confirm your gift. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Thank you for being the church. Today, we want to say thank you to all of our Victory Walkers who supported our Student Ministries GYA event, Operation Christmas Child. We were able to fill over 100 shoe boxes with small toys and school supplies to help reach children with the love of Jesus Christ. Victory is carrying the spirit of giving throughout the holiday season. Starting today, November 29th through December 13th, you have an opportunity to join us as we partner with Angel Tree to help incarcerated parents bless their children with gifts on Christmas. Over 6 million children have incarcerated families, and over the past 10 years, we have sponsored over 1,000 children through Angel Tree. This year, for our 15th anniversary, our goal is to support over 150 kids. For more information and to donate, visit our website at getthevictory.org.
It's, it's, it's more along the lines of you having the, the mouth that will be able to speak life and speak faith and, and speak encouragement and speak hope because that is what the world needs. We need the church to not speak negatively and derogatory and be complainant and murmur and groan. Do you know that murmuring, complaining and groaning is an illegal use of your mouth? Your mouth was made to praise. Your mouth was made to worship. And so when we do anything but give God glory with our mouths, with our speech, with our communication, we are doing not just ourselves a disservice, but the world needs God to exude from our lips. Hey, Victory Walkers, it's Pastor Tim. What an incredible reminder and uh, that we just heard from Pastor Norfolk to watch your mouth. He's been teaching us all month long how to be the church and our foundation scripture shows us and gives us the blueprint of how to be that example. And guess what? It starts with speech. Yeah. What you say, what comes out of your mouth. And listen, we gave you all a challenge and you blew it up. You did such an amazing job, an incredible job speaking words of victory, speaking words of power and speaking words of positivity. Yeah, to loved ones, to, to friends. And guess what? Did you see the post? Because we spoke some words about you too. We tagged you. Yeah, go check it out. And it doesn't stop now. It doesn't stop. I need you to type in the chat right now. Come on, pick your phone up, type in the chat, pick your computer up and type some words of victory right now. Come on, T tell somebody that you are love. You are powerful. You are victorious. Yeah, that's it. Come on, let's go, let's go. I'm so proud of you all. I'm ready to move forward. Are you? We're getting ready to hear from Pastor Norfolk and Pastor Ray King, and they're going to tell you how your words of victory bless somebody else. So before we get into victory words, words of affirmation and encouragement, I just want to give you a little bit more insight and a little bit more backdrop on how we got to victory words. So we have an outreach ministry here at the church and it's called GYA, which is an acronym for give yourself away. God gave and graced me with the vision to launch this some years ago. So it's not a new phenomenon. It's not something that we have not been doing but it is definitely a huge part of our life and our, our, our ministry efforts in this season, especially during the pandemic. GYA, give yourself away. And I put the tagline on there because this was, I thought, the most incredible uh, phrase to chronicle or categorize how I feel and how we should feel as a people and as a church. Live to be missed, not just remembered. Live to be missed, not just remembered. So. I am excited that God favored us right before the pandemic to bring this man of God on board as the outreach pastor here at Victory. And he has had a major job <laughs> on his hands. I have had to uh, pull on him like never before. I don't think he could have imagined that when he stepped into this role, no. he would be stepping in at the height of a pandemic. But he's done an incredible job, an amazing job, and I'm excited that he is a part of the Victory team, but I'm even more excited that he has spearheaded our GYA efforts or our Give Yourself Away efforts. So to God be the glory, and can you help me thank God for our very own Pastor Ray King. <laughs> so woo, we cheering, woo. Everybody's celebrating, I know, I, I hear you celebrating. Pastor Ray, this has been a different season, a different kind of season, or a different time uh, for everybody in every way. How have you been able to maintain outreach when we have not been able to reach out and touch people? What are some of the incredible things that you guys have done uh, to make sure that we are being the church? Well, you're right. Outreach has been, has been different in this COVID season because you're, you're, you have less manpower. And so we had to do everything in a distance and in virtual. Um, we had to do a lot of phone calls and ask specifically, what are your needs? Prior to um, COVID, you would bless someone with this, what they asked for, and a little bit more. But now you don't have the ability to go in and give them that physical hand. So you have to ask them, what do you need? And so we've been able to partner with a lot of people. Um, that's been our main thing, to do partnerships. Um, we partner with the um, Boys Club of Chicago. We partner with um, Mayhag of Greater Chicago, which helps with suicide awareness because oh, wow. a lot of wow. people have been suffering from depression during mm. this time. 
um, and various other agencies, we also have been, we also have blessed uh, or tried to work with people through the micro pantries. And those are, are pantries that are set aside on the sides of agencies that want to participate that are open 24 hours a day. We go, we fill those up. So if you get off work or if a person wasn't able to go to the food pantry, they're able to go there. So, so what are some of the things that we've done for the first uh, responders? I know that that was a huge part, especially at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, one of the, the things that I pushed you to do is like, hey, <laughs> we need to be a part. We need to be a part. And yeah. so let me let me make sure you understand. I really, <laughs> really pushed him yeah. during this pandemic. All the stuff that you have seen us do, it's because of him and an uh, army of people yes. that have supported him. So all of you that are part of the outreach efforts here at Victory, thank you. I love yes. you. Now, let me get back to Ray. Pastor Ray, <laughs> what, what are some of the things that we did for first responders in the beginning? Well, I want to say, let me say that um, our 400, uh, over 400 Victory Walkers came together and we wrote letters. Um, they participated in writing letters that we actually took to our central workers to let them know that we are praying for them, we are thinking for them, and we're blessing them. On top of that, we're also able to provide gift cards for food and for them to be able to, for two full floors of ICU um, department so they could get food after work because they're working 13 and 14 hours to just let them know that we care and we know the need and we try to meet that need. So let me let me make sure I'm clear. You you basically had the members and the team of people in the outreach area. Yes. You had them write victory words. Yes, right. right. <laughs> victory words. words to give to uh, people in in first well first responders yes. was that the only place that we sent well, letters? Where else do we send letters? Well, you, you know you've been pushing watch your mouth. Yeah, you've watch been your pushing mouth. that watch yes. your mouth. So we want to have encouraging words for that. Right. So not only that, but um, the Victory Walkers also wrote over 1,200 letters wow. and sent it out to assistant living facilities, four wow. different assistant living facilities, to encourage those who may not have a loved one who may be on the inside of their um, their apartment or their home and doesn't have anyone to check on them. Wow. Just to let them know that we care about them. Wow, that's in, that's incredible. That is amazing. As you can see, we are not just having, well, we're not having church. None, right. Nobody's having church, but we are committed to being the church. And I have put an incredible amount of pressure on all of us as Victory Walkers to not just say that we're a part or a member of the church, but to be the church. And there's yeah. so many ways that you guys have contributed, so many things that have been a blessing to so many people. I have received some of the letters, some of the emails. I've bumped into people in the grocery store. I don't understand how you know me with masks <laughs> and all the stuff that I put on, but you still know that that's Pastor Norfolk and you, you can't wait to tell us how we've been a blessing. And so I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being the church. And thank you, Pastor Ray, for leading the army of, of believers in that particular effort in this season yeah. and in the seasons to come. So uh, he's been dying to get on stage. I got him on stage, y'all. He's finally, he's finally here. Yeah, that's is, right. <laughs> finally made it, This is Pastor Ray King, and I'm going to have him sing the L note now. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> No. Where my got, contract set up. No, no, no. Let me save you. Let me save you. Let me rescue you. Oh, me hey, you. be the church. We got more right. to come. Check this out. Tanya and I um, serve on um, evangelism mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And it was an initiative that we wanted to uh, actually reach out during this pandemic um not to just people we wanted to hit essential workers and also we um had found out about um a facility out on, um out by south shore mm -hmm. that um was very televised mm -hmm. that um nobody actually came in to the help of this assisted living facility mm -hmm. so we came together and the pro and put this project together mm -hmm. to pretty much bless this uh facility Mm -hmm. with sending them these thinking of you letters with you know very much encouraging words yeah. and we lobby, lobby from a lot of uh victory walkers to send in these letters mm -hmm. write these letters you know giving them this encouragement let them know that we are being the church we love you we yeah. are praying for you and this is what i love about god is that every every moment every day every year every month that i spend with him he makes me better he shows me something else that I've got to confront about me. He helps me to wrestle with my own mindset. He helps me to arrest the things that are keeping me from doing and being and having all that he wants me to have and to be and to do. He wants me better. So I like 
the good shepherd. I'm talking about Jesus himself. I want you to have better, better life, better family, and I want you to be a better you. So at the beginning of the pandemic, we had an incredible opportunity to fellowship and talk with some amazing women. Uh, some sisters from around the country who uh, have unique circumstances, unique situations, and we had an opportunity to sow into them because we recognized that they were being the church. They weren't just attending or having church. They really were being the church. And this sister that I want to let you peep in on, she did an amazing or an incredible thing in sowing into the life of somebody else. So, as you'll see, it's not enough to just be better, but you have to, in being better, help others to be better. That's why I was pushing that so hard. That's why I really wanted to drive that message home. Because when we're better, we are better not just for ourselves, but we are better for other people. Watch this. I have Marion Smith on here. Yes, sir. How are you? Good to, have, good to have you. Thank you for doing this. Oh, no. Thank you for including me. You have a very different type of story, very unique story, but still a powerful story. I cannot wait to uh, hear more about how, uh, how God has moved in this particular circumstance. And just a general synopsis, I know it's going to be it's a lot of layers and levels, but a high level uh, a view of, of how you ended up taking on uh, this beautiful young lady and, uh, and even how you have uh, taken on more. I'll let you tell the story. I won't tell it, but I'm excited about how God is using you guys. <laughs> uh, I guess he's just using me to be his vessel to get to this young lady. Um, we came about just being neighbors. Hmm. Uh, her family was and is going through um, a difficult time during a separation of just parental stuff and uh, it started with there was always a crowd there and she would I invited her to come over and just you know just to get her out of that adult environment right um and she would come over do her homework go back home go to bed get up go to school and that was a cycle and then we just start to communicate more and she would spend a night every here and there they went through a separation, they meaning her parents, mm -hmm. um, bad. And when school started, I saw the, I just saw she was going through something, not knowing where she was staying. She'll say, where am I staying tonight? You know, um, I just felt like she was comfortable enough here and I just took it on to say, once school starts, she can just stay here permanently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've been. Um, and again, not to say that her family has not stepped in as far as uh, I could take her over if I had something to do or whatever, to spend the weekends with her uh, grandmother. And, you know, we, she and I have developed a friendship where it wasn't there before. I was just a stranger to them. But um, I got Paris committed into going to church. And wow. I think that's how we actually connected. Okay. Uh, I would take her to church with me every Sunday. And then it got to a point that my I connect my small groups. The young people started a small group. And it happened to be on the same night of mine. So she made me get up <laughs> to come and go. And uh -huh. she's developed um, she's developed a, 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 a want to go now. Um, I'm I'm just I'm amazed in the growth of her. She's fourteen. She'll be fourteen next week. Wow. Um, and I'm just amazed in her growth and how she is handling this like a champ. Um, wow. And when I say handling this as a champ, I mean you can count on one finger how many sad days. She go wow. through this. She go and mope. She finds something joyous wow. in wow. any and everything. And wow. Also, mm. um, How have you been a part of this process? And of course, that's your mom. So I'm sure you were pretty protective of this whole process. Mm -hmm. in the Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, 
for myself and my sisters, we are really trying to push my mom to get out of the neighborhood because it is a really bad neighborhood. Let's just be honest. <laughs> and it's just not a place that we want our mom to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it just dawned on me one day that God placed her there in mm -hmm. order to My help Harry. God. Yeah. I have never been through anything that she has gone through. I can't even imagine because my wow. mom is being modest. She's not telling you a lot of the stuff that Paris went through and why she was staying with my mom. And so I just thought that was a blessing for God. my mom that she didn't stop giving to someone else, even though Ooh. she may not have it to give, Glory you know, God. which is amazing. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just think it's just really awesome. Sister Marion and, and Sister Ebony and your sisters, thank you for being an example of what it is to serve Christ. Because serving Christ is not serving ourselves, it is serving others. And what you're doing, what you're doing right now for that young lady is so extraordinary. Can I just be honest and real for a minute? The church can be church people. Church folks can be some of the most unloving, unfaithful, and unappreciative or un unkind people on the face of the planet Earth. I'm not talking about true disciples who might get it wrong, but they're trying their best to get it right. I'm talking about people who have resolved that it's okay to sit back and participate in behavior that is unbecoming of a believer and or in speech that does not sound like it is laced in the love of God. That's what's needed, family. The world needs love. Well, everybody, this is Pastor Carlos Jones. He is a phenomenal man of God, a husband, a father, and a pastor of an incredible church in Houston, Texas, Inspiration Church. You know I love you guys, right? And I've had the privilege of being his pastor and covering him, as a matter of fact, we as Victory Walkers launched alongside he and Inspiration Church, we launched their ministry. How many years ago has it been now? It's been three years. Three years ago. So we have a church in Houston, Texas that, that I have the privilege of being the pastor's pastor and, and covering, but I'm extraordinarily proud of how incredible they have been the church. They are not just having church, but they are really committed to being the church. And so they've done some, some significant things. And I'll just let him talk and tell you a little bit about it. Pastor Carlos, thank you for being in victory today. You have just stepped <laughs> into victory. <laughs> yeah. It feels so good. It's so good to be here in Chicago with you, Pastor, and the good victory family. We thank you guys for your support. Uh, a lot of the things we couldn't do without you. And I don't know if you remember, when we first were ready to launch in 2017, Hurricane Harvey hit yes, uh, Houston. Yes, I do remember. And yes. uh, I remember a conversation, and you guys were like, what, what are you guys doing? And we said, we're trying to rescue folks. These are some of the things that we need. And I got a call back maybe within about 20 minutes. And you guys helped us to purchase a boat and go out and save over. We helped rescue over 12,000 families. Let's stop. Uh, yes. Let's just stop right there. Did you, I want to make sure you don't miss this. 12,000 families. You and your efforts, see, this is what it means to be the church, but more importantly, you, you've heard me preach on be loving. Well, that is yeah. love. That's yeah. a lot of love, 12,000 yeah. yeah. people. So, so finish, tell me more about, about that experience. So, and, and, you know, the whole city was underwater. Uh, and so we teamed up with a couple of folks from Louisiana and uh, we were able to get some folks that were calling in. As a matter of fact, we got a call from some folks in Chicago that said that their family was stuck in wow. an uh, apartment complex and we were able to send people over that. there. Yeah, Pastor wow. Gabriel called us. And so it was an amazing time and it really gave us life. But if you guys wouldn't have been as loving as you, as you were, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish those things. And so that's just one of the major projects that almost stopped us from launching. Uh, but we were wow. able to launch and we were able to do that. And we think we had over 600 folks at that first uh, service that you were able to be a part of. And so that's been great. But since then, we've been in the schools, the high schools. We've been um, at the community uh, shelters. We've been at the Star of Hope. We've been um, in 
uh, hospitals. We've been everywhere just spreading the love of Jesus Christ. And that's thanks to you guys' generosity for your love, your support, you your guys. prayers, <laughs> everything that you guys have been willing to give and to sow into us, we now sow it into the Houston area. And so we're just happy to be a part of this, man, because it's, it's nothing like uh, receiving love, but it's even better to give that love to those around you that need it. So, so that's, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to just skate by this. He just dropped it in there and kept running, but I want to pause and back up. What an incredible testimony that your church was launched in love. Yeah. That, wow. that yeah. is beyond exciting to me. Your church, our church, Inspiration Church was launched in love. In love, yeah. You know, a hurricane threatened to cancel yeah. your our normal, because we had plans, we had our, our organization yeah. Reach. That's how I actually got him. I have a church planning organization uh, called Reach, and actually he was assistant director of the program after he was the first launch for us. Yeah. And so uh, we, 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 we had all of these strategies and plans and timelines laid out, and then a hurricane. Yeah. But not even a hurricane can stop you from being loving. Come on and preach. From showing and exemplifying the love of God. It doesn't matter the setbacks. It doesn't matter what you guys experience and what you may be experiencing in love. You can still be a blessing to other people. So I applaud you. I celebrate you. And then I want to, I want to take it a step further. Not only did we have the privilege of, of uh, sowing into their ministry and launching them into their community, but I've got other pastors around the country that we have launched, and one of them specifically is with us today. He's not here physically, but we got him on Zoom, and that is Pastor Brandon. Pastor Carlos mentored him and coached him in his launch. So I'm tremendously excited and proud of the both of them. Here's a conversation between uh, Pastor Brandon and I. We're glad that he's here today. Watch this. So Pastor Brandon, thank you so much for being in Victory or in Victory Bolingbrook, uh, Chicago <laughs> and Global. <laughs> You're always in Victory. Yeah, you in are. Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, in Birmingham, exactly. Uh, let, me, let me just talk about with you for a minute. What have you and Victory City, Birmingham, what have you done uh, that is intentional uh, towards being the church? Yeah, so um, everything everything that our church is, is evangelistic. Um, I mean, you remember when, when we first launched, we started our series with Be the Church, and we talked about knowing Christ, growing in Christ, sowing Christ in others, and that last portion being extremely important. And so, you know, one of the things that we've been known for doing is literally not just taking things to like the homeless community, but actually fellowshipping with them and exchanging phone numbers and, and inviting them to church and spending time with them. And unfortunately, you know, everything that we would normally do, we haven't really been able to do because of coronavirus. So it's kind of forced us to take advantage of a lot of the mediums that we have, whether it's through social media, whether it's through um, emails, whether it's through um, just people who, who work with other people really being intentional about the people that you would normally see, getting on Zooms, inviting people, hosting, hosting limited events at the church, but allowing the city to come in and being the light in the community. Um, I mean, we've been able, we, we were able to even host the inauguration for our new mayor in oh, our church. Wow. And so that was a phenomenal introduction to, to the church, but also to the people in our community. Um, so, things like that um so, so being the church has not just been uh about uh outreach in the traditional sense where, right where you've done that as well feeding the homeless i know that you guys did an incredible extraordinary job at going out and feeding the homeless when you first started that was a major part of your your uh, passion and your thrust but it sounds like it's it's more than that being the church is not just being the church in the traditional outreach efforts, but it's even being the church in civic community. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. is, you know, one thing that we talk about a lot of the church in, in all of our staff meetings is, you know, everybody wants to be global, but very few people are within their community wow. where they where they have a fingerprint on the community. Wow. And we want to be very intentional that the people across the street from the church know who we are. 
the mm. people in the community and the mayor, the city council leaders, they know who we are. And because of that, I think it has opened up opportunities. I mean, even with us not being able to gather like we traditionally would gather, um, it's given us more exposure to people who normally wouldn't have been able to come to our church because the the most common thing is like, oh, Victory City, you know? So it's, it's one of those, it's like, where, yeah, where, you, where you really see, okay, because we're, we're opening our doors for, for anybody who, who wants to do something for the community, is making us more recognizable and is building relationships. And the good thing about it is it doesn't stop with me. It mm-hmm. starts with me, but it's it's our membership who are telling people about what we're doing in the church that's really spreading. And it's word of mouth. It, it really is. I, I'm so incredibly excited. You know, scripture says that he will make your name great. And so he is definitely making your name great among men because of the work that you're doing, the favor that he's shown you, uh, the partnerships that we'll tell them about another time, but big (laughs) partnerships, I mean, really, really big partnerships in ministry to be the church, even in education, Mm -hmm. and to take that avenue. You're an educator, uh, a teacher, former teacher, now you're an administrator, you're the boss, you're the big boss. (laughs) But, but... (laughs) But I, I praise God that he's using you in the ways that he is, that you're being the church individually and your, your, your wife, First Lady Christie, who hates to hear that, but I'm going to say it anyway. First Lady Christie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, it, it, you're making the church's name great. You're making Victory's name great, but you're making the church of Jesus Christ's name great. And that's what all of us are here for, united across all of the the territories, but with one mission, one cause, and that's to live to be missed and not just remembered. And yeah. so that's that's exactly what you just you just beautifully laid out, and that's exactly what we hope to see from now until we're praying for you, man. Yes, yes, we need, we need the prayers. You know, pastoring during this time is not easy and gathering, but it is the grace of God, and and really being able to see how innovative you all have been and what you're doing that has motivated us all the more. And we've seen just a tremendous amount of uh, response to it, um, exposure. And I really do think even in this, which which seems like it should have been detrimental to the health of the church has actually made our church healthier, made our church more Amen. innovative. And that's, that's to the glory of God. Absolutely. Amen. Well, man, keep, keep on being the church. We appreciate you, brother. We'll, we'll be in touch. All right. We had just recently um, moved into a place of transition. It was sudden. Uh, We didn't know we was gonna end up where we were, but um, somehow, some way, I still don't know to this day because Pastor Ray haven't really told me, like how did my story end up in in your presence? I don't even know. But the bottom line is for several days, I saw this number, it started with 331. And I'm like, I'm not answering that. I'm like, this is the, I don't need this. You know, we, you know, I was sharing with you how just a year prior, I just lost my husband. And so we were in this place of transition and still trying to heal. And I was like, the last thing I need is to be listening to some bill collectors talking about what I owe them. Okay. So I ignored it, but he kept leaving messages. And I was like, wait a minute. And so on the third day, um, I was getting ready to delete all the voicemails. And Holy Spirit was like, no, Mm -hmm. like clearly, like in my belly, no. I was like, oh, and I jumped back because it was so clear. So I listened to the voicemail. He's like, hi, this is Pastor Ray from Victory uh, Cathedral. I was like, okay. He was like, "Um, we heard your story and we want to reach out to you, see how we can help. I was like, okay, I got plenty of stories. What story, you know? So I called him back and he told me, he's like, we heard about what you're going through, you know, you lost your husband and home. And he was like, we just want to see how you can, how we can help. And I was like, uh, huh? You know, because honestly, that type of help does not come to us easily. And so I was thinking, okay, what's behind the scenes? What do I got to give? You know, sometimes you feel like, what kind of blood do I have to give? What is, what's behind all this, you know? And so, but once I talked to him, I heard the sincerity um, behind his voice that, you know, they just heard the story and they wanted to do something to help us. And I was like, wow, okay. So when I was telling him, I was like, 
I almost deleted this. And so basically, I think it was a couple of days later, he was like, hey, can you get on a Zoom and just kind of share because they helped us with some of the expenses with where we were. And he was like, can you just get on a Zoom and try to share your experience? And I was like, ah, you know, cause I was still like, oh no, you know, but I was like, you know what, God, I promised you that wherever I am, no matter what I'm going through, I will always proclaim your goodness. And so I was like, you know what? Somebody else can be inspired by what, what is happening now in my life and still having the joy of the Lord and peace and still ministering to people, even widows, right where I am, somebody can have hope. So we get on this Zoom call and there was a couple of other people and then Smokey Norfolk shows up and I'm going like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know how you guys keep yes. a straight face? Yes. Oh, okay. And he's telling me, Nita, like you're a real person. Mm -hmm. I heard the details of your, like, he's like, how you are inspiring. And I'm still staring in the screen like, okay, what just happened? And so we shared our story and he was just like, you're serious. You just lost your husband like a year ago. You just lost, I was like, yes. It's like, I can't tell. I, I can't tell. And I was telling like, the, the scripture says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. And so at the end of the call, he goes, well, I just want to bless you guys. And um, we're going to sow a thousand dollars into. We all just lost it, like in that moment, because the timing of it was amazing. And I was, you know, God was still healing me from some previous scars, from um, expecting certain people to come alongside of us and help us. And we were just feeling just by ourselves where we were. And so, and the seed was like so on time. I can't even explain how much it was, but it was so on time. And so, you know, they sold that seed and I was able to take care of our, take care of us for like another month and a little bit more, I think, um, and get some food and things like that. So it was phenomenal just to know that there were people who cared. So I feel like that moment also helped me to wipe away everybody that wasn't there, but that was a hope moment. It was like, God, I call God El Roy, that's his name, God who sees me. And even though we felt like we were alone and kind of like at the bottom of everything, not understanding why my husband had to pass, that moment gave me so much more hope and so much joy. I was like, we are not by ourselves. God sees us. And I still don't know how he got my story. I was like, this had to have been angelic help. Like this is what God does to us. And I believe that's part of the reason why we haven't fainted in this whole journey because we know God is gonna make a way. That's the pastor that I'm meeting with, but I know this is your job too. And I know you have been patient. I know the times have been good to make you something. I just wanna be a blessing. I have my kids. Like I said, I ain't got my job. As you can see, our whole thrust this month has been be the church. And it's not just this month, it has been <laughs> the entire 15 years of victory. My whole push and passion has been for us to be the church, to truly live to be missed and not just remembered. I, I've always wanted that, I long for that. My life has exemplified that. And guess what? I'm not by myself. You have exhibited that. So thank you for being the church. Thank you to all of the Victory Walkers, all of the people that have contributed around the world to make it possible for us to keep being the church. It's because of you that souls have been saved, lives have been changed, people have been healed, set free, and delivered. And I'm excited to partner with you and to walk hand in hand with you in the process 
of sowing and serving other people, not just having church, but really, I'm, I'm glad that we, we're a church who's committed to being the church. And remember, a part of being the church is being a better version of yourself. We're no good to anybody else if we're no good to ourselves, right? So we've got to be better. We've got to guard our words because out of the abundance of your own heart, your mouth speaks. We have to watch your mouth. Watch your mouth, be better. And of course, we want to be loving. God is love and we want to be more like him in everything that we do in every way. We want to be loving, be better, watch your mouth, be the church. But I, I don't want to leave you like that. I've got to give you the last one. I didn't, I didn't have an opportunity because it's a special day for us, special service for us, but I didn't have an opportunity to give you the last one. So I'm going to give you a very short version of it because I think it's the most powerful one. Be faithful. You have to have faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And part of that process is understanding why it's so valuable for you to have faith. Faith is, it is the key to God, but it is also the key to your success, to your victory, to your ability to be the church. In the book of Mark, in the 11th chapter, uh, around verses 13 and 14 is where I'll, I'll really resonate, but I want you to read the whole thing when you have an opportunity. In the book of Mark, the 11th chapter, 13 through 14, it says, And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, and happily he might find anything thereon. But when he came to it, he found that nothing was there. There were no leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. So let me give you the abridged version. Here's the Cliff Notes version. Jesus was walking along and he and the disciples happened upon a fig tree. And when they came to the fig tree, it had leaves. It looked like it was supposed to look. It had everything that it needed on the outside. But when he got close enough to it, to get the glory out of it or to benefit from it, guess what? There were no figs. It had leaves, but it had no fruit. How many of us have leaves, but we're really not bearing fruit? We make a lot of noise. We go through the actions. We go to work every single day, but it, it is not yielding or it doesn't seem very fruitful. And so here's, here's what I want you to get from this. I, I, want, I want us to be a fruitful people, but in order to be a fruitful people and in order to be the church, we also have to be a faithful people. This is why it's important. This family is why it's important that you have faith because faith is your key to victory. It is your ability to see the impossible. It is your ability to accomplish what is intangible or unfathomable to, to somebody who does not walk in faith. It's so powerful, it's so important. Let me just give you a few things. This is what faith does. First of all, faith gives you the ability to speak to unproductive things in your life. Note that when he came through, that he spoke to a Jesus. I don't want you to miss this. Jesus talked to a tree. <laughs> I mean, it seems crazy when you think about it. It's like the Lord is walking through and he sees a, a tree with leaves and no fruit and he speaks to, he starts talking to a tree. <laughs> How crazy does that seem? But it, it, it ought to be that same dynamic with us. He spoke to the tree because he saw that the tree wasn't being productive. What in your life do you need to speak to? What is your it? Jesus said to it, meaning the tree, but what it do you need to talk to? What's being unfruitful and unproductive? You need to begin to be a faith talker. What thing, what obstacle, what thing is causing your life to not bear fruit and to be unproductive? You need to talk to it. You need to speak victory words. This is when your words carry weight. You need to affirm and declare the things that God has invested in your heart and in your spirit. Talk to it, be a faith talker. And, and what did he say? He said, no man will eat fruit hereafter forever. In other words, he says, when he, when he talked to the tree, he says, after this day, this will never happen again. Whatever your it is, whatever you're talking to, 
You got to make sure that you make your mind up, declare it, decree it, stand firm in faith and believe this will never happen again. No, I, I need you to say it from the bottom of your spirit. I need you to reach way down and declare whatever that it is that you're talking to, whatever thing has been an obstacle that has pre prevented you from producing fruit, say this will never happen again. The other thing I want you to notice about faith is that faith produces supernatural results. If we look at the text, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just run through it right quick. In verse 19, and when, he, when the evening was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning they passed by the same fig tree. And when they came by the same fig tree, guess what? The fig tree had done exactly what he told it to do. It dried up from the root. It dried up from the root. So supernatural things are gonna happen. Extraordinary things are about to happen. Supernatural things are gonna happen because you have the kind of faith to believe and to speak and to decree under the authority of God. He, he spoke to it, so supernatural things were the result or a supernatural outcome was a result. The other thing about faith is that faith doesn't deal with just the fruit, but don't miss this, faith also deals with the root. Not only are supernatural things going to happen, but they will happen when you deal with the root. The scripture says that it dried up from the root. If you don't deal with the root of a thing, you're never going to see the benefit or the blessing of the fruit of a thing. And so there is a root connected to everything that's being manifested and produced in your life. What is the root? You got to deal with the root. Sometimes that's uncomfortable, it's painful, it hurts, because you're gonna have to go back and deal with some stuff that you don't wanna talk about. You're gonna have to go back and deal with some things that happen between you and your mom and you and your daddy. You're gonna have to go back and deal with some things that are uncomfortable, that are frustrating. As a matter of fact, these things are so frustrating that you immediately get mad when somebody brings it up. I'm talking to you, yep. You immediately come to a place in your own attitude and actions where you want to fight, where you get defensive because when you start talking about it, it brings up the emotion. And instead of dealing with the root of it, you would rather just keep trying to produce fruit. But the problem is your fruit is not good. No, let me help you out. Your fruit is not good. And it's not good because you haven't dealt with the root. So faith gives you the ability to see supernatural things manifested but it also gives you the ability to deal with the root of it so that the fruit is good. And your faith will produce results, watch this, that are so extraordinary, so next level, so incredible, that it causes other people to start asking you, what's going on? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> what's different? What did you do? What, what, what changed? In the, in the Bible, you see in verse 21, it says, And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree that you cursed, it did wither away. What happened? How did you come to this place? How did you get the job? How did you make it through the season? How did you mend your marriage? How did you put the broken pieces back together again? How, how is it now you're walking around in your right mind and I know you're on the verge of a nervous breakdown? How did you pull this off? How did you start the business? How did you launch it? Where did you find it? Where did you get the resources to do this? I don't understand, how did this happen? People will ask questions because they're going to be so baffled, bewildered. They're going to be so confused by the supernatural glory and grace of God that will fall on your life. Why? Because you have faith. Faith produces results that make people ask questions. If you don't believe it, just look at me. People are trying to figure out why are you still alive? <laughs> Some people are asking that about you. Yeah, you don't think, you don't, don't think I'm the only one. Somebody's, somebody's looking, your enemy is looking at you now saying, why are you still alive? Why are you still walking in favor? Why are you still full of grace? Why is the mercy of God abounding in your life? Why are you so prosperous? Why are you so happy? Why are you smiling so much? Why are you so on, on 20 every time I see you? And it's because I have faith, but Last thing, I don't just have faith. I have faith in God. You, you, you can't have faith. You, you, everybody has faith. 
We all have faith, right? We all have faith. You, you have faith in the seat that you sat down in because you believe that it was going to hold you up. You have faith in your vehicle that it was going to start, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> you had faith that it was going to get you to your destination. You had faith in so-called fake, fickle, phony friends. You had confidence to believe that they were going to be your friend. You had faith in the doctor. You had faith in the lawyer. You had faith that your trash collector was going to come and get your trash this week. You had faith. But that kind of faith is not the faith I'm talking about. That faith produces whatever it can produce. That faith has limitations. That faith has boundaries. The person that collects my trash will never do surgery on me, not me. So that faith in that individual has limitations. It has boundaries. But when you have faith in God, nothing is impossible. When you've got a God who is from everlasting to everlasting, that means he spans the course of eternity with no beginning and no ending. When you have the kind of God who can step out of eternity and even subject himself to time because he is above and outside time. When you have faith in God who is grand and great and massive and is the controller, the author, the creator of the universe. That means that you're placing your faith in someone who has no limitations, no boundaries, no limitations. Nothing withheld, just awesomeness, just incredibleness, <laughs> just phenomenal God who is able to do anything. So not only do I want to admonish you to have faith, have faith in God. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. See, God has to be the central focus of your faith. He has to be the object of your faith. Have faith in God. This is why it's important to do that. Because you will never find another person, another anything that is as faithful as God is to us. Did you get that? Put that way you can feel it. When you have faith in Him, His faithfulness to you it's relentless. It is amazing. It is incredible. Have faith in God. One of my favorite hymns, it simply says this, And great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see, and all I have in thee, that thy hands have always provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Great is thy faith, faithfulness, O oh Lord, unto me. He's a faithful God. Be the church. Be the church. If you're faithful to him, he's, he's, more than faithful to us. Be the church. Be loving. Watch your mouth. Be better. Work on you so that you can help work on somebody else. And be faithful. Be the church. God, I thank you for what you've done today. I thank you for what you've done all month. And I thank you for what you've done for 15 years of victory. And I thank you for the 15 that are to come. Thank you for the lives that will be changed, healed, set free, and delivered because we, your people, have committed ourselves to being the church. I give you glory and I give you honor and I give you praise for what you are about to do in us, with us, to us, for us, and through us. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare our victory and we say, amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Come on, celebrate at home, celebrate, turn up in the chat room. Come on, be the church right now and just celebrate Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. I, pray, I praise God that for this entire month, you have been faithful, you've been diligent, you've been here. I could not have done this, needless to say, without you. Church is about you, all right? So thank you for being here today. And, and I also wanna give you an opportunity uh, to make a decision to not just be the church, but be a believer, be a Christian. Everybody uses the word Christian and we use it so carelessly and so frivolously. We say, oh, I'm a Christian. But we'll, really, if, if you're a Christian, then how is it possible for you to be a Christian without Christ as your Lord and Savior? Some people think that it's a cultural thing. Some people use it as just a term, a uh, terminology that is, is used to describe a group. But it's more than that. It's deeper than that. It's bigger than that. Christ doesn't just want you to be somebody that uses his name. Don't pimp him for his juice. <laughs> he wants you to be somebody that has a relationship with him in your heart. And so here's how you do it. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It's, it's simple, very simple. It says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. What are you being saved from? Well, all of us leave this life. None of us live forever. The question is, where will you spend eternity? And this is what I love about God. He doesn't just promise us everlasting life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for us that whomsoever shall believe in him, we, we won't perish. We won't eternally be in hell, but we will live forever in everlasting life in heaven with him. But I love God so much because God is amazing that he didn't just give us benefits after this life. We got benefits in this life. He says, for I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So I praise God that he loves us so much to give us abundant life and everlasting life. You have insurance. Who you have? Allstate, Geico, <laughs> Progressive. Who you have? State Farm, some other one that I don't know the name of. <laughs> Who do you have? You have insurance? That's great. Why do you have insurance? You have insurance, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna. Who do you have? Medicaid, Medicare, you got insurance? Why do you have insurance? You have insurance in case something happens. But get this, death is gonna happen. So it's not insurance, you need assurance. And the difference is insurance you're going to have to pay for it. Somebody's paying for it. Assurance, paid in full. The blessed assurance of knowing that you are in Christ Jesus is simple. Just believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that he is your Lord. And the Bible says you shall be saved. You mean that's all I got to do to sign up for this eternal policy? That's it. So pray this prayer with me. Come on. If you're praying it for the first time, I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to celebrate you like never before. But pray this prayer with me. Everybody, all of us, we do it. We do it together. Lord, thank you for this day and for preserving my life for this moment. I admit I've made some mistakes, but I'm so glad you forgive me. And I believe that you were born. I believe that you died. And by faith, I believe you were raised from the dead. With this confession, I'm excited to say, now you gotta put some power on this one. I am saved. I'm super excited for you. I'm celebrating with you. As a matter of fact, I'm praying for you. God, give them wisdom, grace, strength, direction. Now, make sure you stay connected. It's not enough. No newborn is left by themselves. We want you to have all the support that you need. So text us, 38470. Text the word SAVED. You got it? 38470. Text the word SAVED. We will connect with you. We will equip you. And we will pray with you. All right? I'm excited. I'm so excited for you. And I'm excited about what God is about to do in your life. In the meantime and in between time, I've got some incredible things happening. We have some incredible things happening here at Victory. So watch these announcements. And I will immediately dismiss you right after the announcements. Hey there, Victory. Thanks for joining us this morning for Victory Online. We hope today's message brought you hope, healing, and empowerment. 
We want to connect with you. So if this is your first time joining us or you would like to connect with us in a greater way, text CONNECT to 38470. You can also visit our website for more information at getthevictory.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for daily inspiration and encouragement. While you're at it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Official Smoky Norfolk to catch up on all the latest sermons. Community is happening at Victory. Even in this virtual season, from online Bible studies, virtual life groups, student ministries, and more, there are so many ways that you can get connected to hope, healing, and empowerment with your Victory family. Be sure to visit our website at getthevictory.org and check out the featured section on our homepage to see where you can get connected to community. Join us as we continue to be the church this holiday season through Angel Tree. Our goal this year is to sponsor over 150 children, and you can help by sponsoring a child now through December 13th. For more information about the Angel Tree Project and to donate, visit getthevictory.org. The VQuest Virtual Experience is starting back up in December every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. This fun online experience is catered for students pre-K through the 7th grade. Visit our website at getthevictory.org to sign up and get the full December schedule. The Gen V Online Student Meetup is happening every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Be sure to sign up at getthevictory.org for the weekly access code to join the conversation. Until next week, Victory Walkers, keep walking in victory and remember to be the church. Woo! Hey, hey! Hey, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? I had a great time. I had an incredible time. I'm still dancing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, my kids hate when I dance. I don't care. I'm going to do me. <laughs> and you do you. Keep dancing. Keep celebrating. We're yet alive. We got a reason to be thankful and nothing is impossible. Listen, be the church, not just for this month, but we have to be the people of God and we have to do what God has instructed and commanded of all of us. Be the church. So I thank and praise God for your presence this month. It's been an incredible month. Next month, we got some great stuff coming. You'll hear more about it. Stay tuned, all right? <laughs> in the meantime and in between time, dance. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Y'all yeah, not dancing with me. I don't like that. Dance with me. Here we go. Lord, I thank you for what was said. I thank you for what's been done. And I thank you, God, for what you are about to do. Now may the grace, the love, and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ah, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us, not just now, but forevermore. You got it? Forevermore, in Jesus' name. It all, it's already done. It's already done. Are you dancing yet? Woo! Hey! Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I feel that thing. <laughs> See y'all next week. Yeah! Throw your V's up, throw your V's up. Woo!